good morning class today we are going to talk about a device which help us to measure the atmospheric pressure in the last class we talked about various scenarios where atmospheric pressure is helping in uh, you know carrying out the work and the responsibilities uh, sorry uh, the work different types of applications we have studied in the previous class of atmospheric pressures so today we will talk about the device which can help us to measure the atmospheric pressure and that device is called as barometer barometer is a device which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure i am mentioning this again this atm i am using the short form for atmospheric okay you should write down complete word atmospheric pressure at a place now this barometer is of three types simple then fortins and aneroid we will start with the simple barometer now i have few images let us look at the structure of barometer now this uh, one thing more this barometer was designed by a scientist called torsili yes he used mercury in this barometer although barometer can be made, uh, you know made up of different types of liquids you can use different liquids but uh, mercury is the best uh, liquid why it is best we will uh, learn in uh, later topic so i have a you know figure of a simple barometer which is you know made up of mercury so in this barometer the major you know uh, components which are used to construct is this trough that is a glass vessel or a container which is filled with mercury okay and in this glass container so we have a tube which is also completely filled with mercury so what what what, uh, what happened with this tube uh in this tube the one side is closed whereas the other side is open so you have filled the tube completely with mercury yes and you have put a thumb over the opened end theek hai so you have put a thumb on the opening of the test tube and you have inverted it the moment you have inverted it into the glass vessel make sure that no air bubbles are entering into it means at this point there is complete vacuum and that vacuum is given a special name called as torsilian vacuum so there should not be gas or any vapor or any kind of air particles should not be there why it is not there because it is going to give us wrong reading why so we will discuss it so what we concluded from this structure that we have a glass uh, we have a glass vessel which is filled with mercury there is a tube which has one side opened and another closed the open side is inverted and before you inverted the test tube make sure you have completely filled it with the mercury yes now when you inverted it what happened at this point the atmosphere is exerting pressure on the mercury yes so here the mercury is exerting uh, sorry atmosphere is exerting pressure on the mercury so if i have some point say here if i have a point here c and a point here a okay look at the point this is point a and this is point c so the atmosphere will keep on you know pressing down the mercury till both the points reaches to the same level so due to that atmospheric pressure a certain height is attained by mercury in this test tube and that height is called as barometric height and this barometric height here actually help us to calculate the atmospheric pressure if the atmospheric pressure will increase the barometric height will increase if the atmospheric pressure decreases barometric height will decrease yes now let us look at another picture 
so from the figure we have concluded that mercury level in the test tube becomes stationary at point a this point a is given in figure 4.18 which is at the same level at c and when the pressure at a and c becomes equal yes you are able to evaluate the barometric height what is the barometric height barometric height it is the vertical height of the mercury column in the tube it is the measure of atmospheric pressure which quantity is the measure of the atmospheric pressure barometric height and what is torsalian vacuum torsalian vacuum is the space left empty above the mercury column in the tube i told you that in this vacuum there should not be any air or water vapor present reason is that when air or vapors enter in the vacuum or space they exert pressure on the mercury let us see where they will exert the pressure look here in this diagram if air or any vapors are present over this vacuum torsalian vacuum they will exert pressure on the mercury and what will happen barometric height will decrease okay let me show the arrows here if the pressure is exerted in this direction what will happen to this barometric height it will decrease so in the case of faulty barometer if somehow air or water vapors enter the barometric height get reduced means it get less than the actual barometric height now let us look at the working of the simple barometer uh, simple barometer when atmospheric pressure increases the pressure at c increases and therefore mercury from the trough trough means the glass vessel it flows into the tube when therefore increasing the height of the mercury column that is barometric height increases let us look it at the diagram so how does a barometer works how this simple barometer work this is the trough that is the bottom vessel which is filled with mercury atmosphere pressure is exerted on it the arrows that is the downward arrows you will show so more the atmospheric pressure more will be the pressure at c more will be the pressure at a and the height of the mercury in the test tube will be more in the glass test tube will be more that is barometric height increases now what happened in the reverse case that is atmospheric pressure is less atmospheric pressure is less so at c the atmo atmospheric pressure will be less at a also the pressure reduces and what happened to the height of the uh, mercury column the height of the mercury column decreases and height of the mercury column decreases means barometric height increases so barometric height which is the height from this point a to this last point that is the top of this uh, mercury this is barometric height it is the measure of the atmospheric pressure which quantity is the measure of the atmospheric pressure barometric height is the measure of the atmospheric pressure at a normal temperature what is the barometric height at normal temperature you will say barometric height is 0.76 meter or 76 cm or in millimeter you will write down 760 mm next point is factors affecting barometric height the first factor is it does not vary with the tilt in the tube i am showing you a figure this figure is also given in our book as figure 4.19 Uh, let us understand this so here uh, we are showing you know tubes of different different sizes and one of the tube is also tilt so when you tilt the tube means you are you know it you are making it slopy with the surface <coughs> the tube is tilted you have changed the thickness of the tube you have changed the even the height of the whole tube all these factors does not change the barometric height in every case you will see that the barometric height from where we measure the barometric height from the surface of mercury in the trough that is the bigger glass vessel from this surface till the end point 
the highest level of the mercury level this is called the barometric height you change the test tube you change you tilt the test tube you make it slopey it is not going to affect the barometric height now which factor is going to affect the barometric height just now i mentioned that factor remember recall that factor yes that is the air or the vapors present in this torsalian vacuum that is this upper empty space if in this empty space you find that air particles are there or uh, water vapors or any other liquid vapors are present what will happen they will exert the liquid downward they will exert pressure on the liquid and we will get a barometric height which is less than the actual baro uh, actual height and such barometers are called faulty barometers yes so here i have mentioned that it can vary due to the presence of air and liquid vapors which factor will affect the barometric height air and liquid vapors present in the torsalian vacuum so they are going to exert the pressure and therefore the barometric height reduces look here barometric height is less than the actual height where in which case it happens in the faulty barometers yes although it is said that barometer can use any liquid as a barometric liquid okay what is barometric liquid a liquid which is used in the barometer so the majorly uh, we try, are going to uh, compare mercury and the water although mercury is the ideal material ideal barometric material ideal barometric liquid is mercury but we want to compare it with uh, water because water is easily available it is cheap source you can say but uh, here we can't use water as a biometric liquid why we can't use it why we prefer mercury let us try to find out answer of these questions what are the advantages of using mercury what are the disadvantages of using water so the first point here is density of mercury is greater than any liquid which needed to balance the atmospheric pressure so that we all know that pressure is depending upon density one of the factor on which pressure of the liquid depend is density we have learned density uh, sorry pressure is equal to height into density into acceleration due to gravity yes so this density of the mercury is so high that it help us in balancing the atmospheric pressure with a you know uh, uh, standard amount of uh, standard length of tube otherwise we needed long long tube like in the case of water the density is so less that we required a test tube which is 10.6 meter long so 10.6 meter long 10.4 uh, meter long sorry so 10.4 meter long tube is difficult to balance whereas in the case of mercury we just require 1 meter of test tube 1 meter of glass tube so that we are why the length of the tube is less here because the density is more why the length of the tube is more here because the density of liquid is less here yes now vapor pressure is negligible means uh, mercury even on heat does not produce vapors it does not vaporize and we don't get any vapor in the torsalian vacuum and i have already told you if vapors will be there in torsalian vacuum the barometer will be called as faulty va uh, barometer whereas in the case of water the chances of having water vapors in the vacuum will be there and the reading of barometric height will reduce and in in that case we will get inaccurate reading so in that way you can say mercury is better than water yes in what aspects mercury is better uh, mercury does not stick to the glass tube yes its surface tension is high it does not wet whereas water can stick to the glass tube yes 
so it can give us inaccurate reading mercury is shiny opaque and it can be easily seen we can easily see in the higher level of the mercury whereas the water it is transparent and can be seen easily this is another disadvantage of using water as biometric liquid next is it can be easily obtained in pure state you have you might have studied this fact in chemistry that mercury uh, we can can maintain its purest form it does not combine with the other elements to form compound state yes so the pure form we can easily maintain so these are the few aspects where we can say that mercury is better than water or what are the advantages of mercury so question may come in exam in different different format how mercury is beneficial how mercury is preferred to water why we prefer mercury which material you should use as a biometric liquid mercury or water answer will be mercury support two points give us two reason to use mercury as the biometric liquid okay these are the few questions might be asked in the exam next last uh, topic of this simple barometer is demerits demerits means what are the disadvantages of using this simple barometer why we have moved on to fortins or aneroid barometer so at present time we are using aneroid that is the most easiest barometer to use but what are the disadvantages what made us not to use this simple barometer firstly it is made up of glass tube and it is difficult to handle means the whole apparatus is actually fragile it can break very easily the surface of the mercury trough is open so it might you know uh, impurities might get added to it and you may not get accurate result it is difficult to shift from one place to another place it is quite bulky you have a trough and you have a 1 meter glass tube shifting is quite difficult and another point a scale is not fixed on it so it is difficult to measure the accurate height of the at uh, barometric height it is difficult to measure the barometric height and hence the atmospheric pressure cannot be uh, calculated accurately now the another type of barometer is this fortins barometer i have i'm only showing this as a reference point of view you can see many different images on google how the fortins barometer look um when you will compare this diagram with the diagram given in the book you will find that the leather cap which we are going to discuss it is at the bottom and uh, the whole barometer is enclosed in the brass case so you can see the portions of the brass case are there vernier scales are at uh, a thermometer is there vernier scale is there which help us to record the reading and there is one screw which help us in you know adjusting the leather cap so this is the actual picture of fortins barometer let us uh, compare it with the picture given in book so let us start uh, all of you take out figure 4.20 let us start this barometer from the bottom part that is from the screw this screw is uh, is there to adjust the leather cup now the leather cup is actually filled with the mercury so we have modified the barometer the simple barometer which was in open condition and impurities were getting added to avoid that we have you know now we have got a barometer which is enclosed and we can't impurities can't added to it yes so we have this uh, leather cup which is again filled with mercury mercury is the barometric liquid used in this fortins barometer this mercury leather cup again we have inverted glass vessel similar to the simple uh, barometer 
like in the simple barometer we have a glass tube which was closed at one end and open at the another point so here also we have the same format the uh, mercury is filled in it and the opening side is inverted into the leather cup but what are the special features which are different from simple barometer the special special features are these that we have thermometer to find out the temperature that at this particular temperature atmospheric pressure is this or when the temperature changes atmospheric pressure changes and we can do the you know graph work we can plot the readings there is one more scale that is vernier scale and the main scale where is the main scale main scale is along the length of the glass tube and vernier scale is at the top um you might i i don't know but vernier scale working is um, needs to be understand it does not uh, you know work with the same way so there is a certain procedure there are certain steps to use vernier scale so we add the reading of vernier scale to the main scale and this help us to give us the more accurate reading sometimes you know with the eyes we can't see the readings to the decimal value level okay so vernier scale help us in getting the values at a more accurate level now there is a small slit in the brass case so this whole tube is enclosed in the brass case so that it remain protected because glass is fragile it can break easily but uh, we want to note the reading of vernier scale so brass case uh, uh, this case may in brass case we made a slit so that we can take the reading of uh, this scale very easily and if you want to find the final reading that is the barometric height how to find the barometric height you will add the vernier scale reading and the main scale reading so in my uh, construction when you will see i have mentioned all the parts what is ivory pointer what is leather cup and their function i have mentioned so you should also write down point wise underline the main components of the 14th barometer uh before i proceed let me you know talk about this uh, ivory pointer ivory pointer help us in uh, making you know coincide with the zero scale the, the zero reading of the main scale if you want to start any reading if you want to measure a line what what you do you try to coincide the zero with the line yes so here also this pointer help us in you know uh, making this mercury level this is at the level of mercury if you look closely this pointer ivory pointer end is at the mercury level and we want that the zero scale of the mercury should start from zero itself okay there is zero on this scale and i want zero to completely coincide with the mercury level and how to make it coincide atmospheric pressure to change ho raha hai sometimes this mercury in the leather cup is going down sometimes it is going up so this level this level might not coincide with the zero of this main scale how to move it up and down okay so this screw this screw help us so if you are uh, you want to move the mercury level to coincide with the zero you are going to rotate the screw you will lift it upward if you feel that the mercury has gone up and we want the higher level to come to the level of zero hame use niche leke aana reading ke sath coincide karna hai so what you will do you will lose your screw so that the mercury which has gone up the mercury which is in the leather cup you want this mercury level to coincide with the zero of the main scale you screw it downward ठीक है सो डाउनवर्ड हम उसको मूव करेंगे एंड दिस दिस पॉइंटर विल कम टू द जीरो ऑफ द स्केल ऑल दो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर नॉट देयर इन द बुक बट आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू सो दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ अ फोर्टीन बैरोमीटर वर्क लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इट अगेन टू यू टू गेट द रीडिंग इन द फोर्टीन बैरोमीटर you have to use this screw so that the mercury level in the trough uh, sorry in this leather cup 
comes to the level of zero reading in the main scale after taking the main scale reading you will note down the vernier scale reading that two readings will be added to get the net result that is the biometric height and biometric height we know is the measure of atmospheric pressure i hope the working and the construction of fortin's barometer is clear to all of you go through my notes when uh, during this uh, youtube class uh, you will be given time to read the notes also and at the same time i will be online with you you could you should send your doubts directly to me on my whatsapp number you will send me the doubts and uh, simultaneously i will resolve your doubt uh, so class try to use this youtube timings very uh, wisely and uh, uh, and it all depends upon you okay children if you are sending me the doubts the doubts will be solved on the spot the topic will become clear to you R while reading the notes if you find any confusion in the word that confusion can also be discussed so i want you to utilize the youtube channel uh, youtube class timing very very attentively and i i am going to wait for your doubt whether the topic is cleared or not now let me quickly take the last barometer so the third type of barometer is aneroid barometer i am showing you how the outer structure of aneroid barometer yes in this aneroid barometer you can see that there is a pointer there is a scale this pointer when it is moving towards you know left side so it means pressure is increasing when it is moving to the right uh, sorry left side it moves pressure decreases here the values are less so here atmospheric pressure will be less if the pointer moves to this side the uh, pressure will be more okay now let us look at the structure of barometer from inside i am these figures are only for the reference you will draw only the figures which are given in the book some of the images are from outside source these are only for the understanding okay to visualize the concept more easily let us look at the structure of ender enderoid barometer barometer so here uh, there is a uh, barometer enderoid barometer from inside so we have you know uh, lie it down it is not in the standing position we have not placed it but in fact it, it it is lying down so from there you can see that inside this you have a you know a box is there uh, a disc like of box or you can say that corrugated box corrugated means the surfaces are going up and down so inside this box it is partially if evacuated the partially evacuated box has a corrugated top that is the disc d in the book it is mentioned as the top of the box so top of the box there is a lever so actually the arrangement is uh, different from what is given in the book and i could not find uh, the original uh, you know uh, these barometers having exact format which is given in the book uh because in the book it is given a more simpler version so that you can understand so i have tried to find out a barometer which matches with the book picture so you can see that the top of this box a disc uh, there is a lever a rod like thing is there which is toothed end toothed means so there are you know up and downs irregularities are there so the long rod with the toothed end is attached to a lever which also has a toothed surface okay so when this wheel rotates the pointer attached to it rotates i am repeating all the points again in a aneroid barometer you have a box which is partially evacuated the upper surface of the box they are corrugated corrugated means they are up and down so that they can uh, have that vibrations 
sorry due to atmospheric pressure up and down movement can be cached the up and down movement cached are are actually cached by the long rod which is attached to which is also called as the lever there the end you have a toothed surface this toothed surface is again combined it is connected to a wheel so there is a wheel the wheel is connected to the pointer yes so this is the basic construction let now let us compare this figure with the book figure now in the book i will start from this point so this is actually the box the box which was in the middle which is partially evacuated on the pot, box the surface is corrugated so they are showing the zigzag path you can observe the picture on google theek hai images you can search from this top of the box there is a thin rod which has a toothed end okay so this whole structure is shown here this is the partially evacuated box the toothed end of the levers are attached to a wheel which is again you know have a toothed end now these toothed end when they rotate the pointer rotates now how it works let us go through the working now what happens in this barometer when the atmospheric pressure increases the diaphragm depresses means this diaphragm this box the upper layer that is the diaphragm or disc which i was calling it so that diaphragm pressure presses means the pressure is exerted on the disc so it comes down now when it comes down the rod l also get uh, depressed the rod l is this rod l yes it goes down and the wheel rotated clockwise and the pointer moves to the right and the pointer moves to the right side i have shown you an right barometer that the right side the readings were more so right right side that is the clockwise the pointer moves and it shows the greater reading now what happen when the atmospheric pressure decreases the uh, uh, definitely the diaphragm will move in the opposite direction yes in the previous case the diaphragm press downward now what will happen it will bulge outward so remember all these point it uh, bulges outward so when this diaphragm or this disc it moves upward what will happen to the rod rod will also move up but the uh, in that case the wheel will rotate anti clockwise anti clockwise means in this direction opposite this is anti clockwise anti clockwise means pointer will move to the left side and pointer moves to the left side means uh, less readings will be observed and this is how the aneroid barometer works try to you know rewind the video again and again and listen to the working of all the three barometers and note down all the notes in your copy yes class thank you all of you